Hi guys. Lately I have been obsessed with making little mini journals. I've made some of these mini zines and I'll put a link to the, that video that shows how that works. I've got vintage ones, different themes. I've also made some envelope journals. Two different styles of those and I love doing that. Today I'm going to make a, here's a sneak peek, a mini journal using shipping tags. Now the shipping tags that I am using for this process measure four and three quarters by little over two and a quarter but you can use the larger ones as well. Any size will work and you can follow the exact same steps. So to start out you want to lay your tags, your four tags, whatever size, on your table and leave a space in between. Now if you plan on putting a lot of texture paste and layers in there. You're going to want the space between them, which are basically going to act as hinges, to be a wider space. So here I'm just using regular old, it's masking tape here. And my plan is to cover this all up. I'm going to use my gel prints. So I'm not going to see this. I'm not going to have to paint it or anything. So I'm just layer, putting this on, applying this to glue or to put these tags all together. And I wanna fold it up and make sure that it hinges correctly, that I can close it completely. Now again, if you want this, you want to put a lot of modeling paste or a lot of layers inside, you will need to widen that. And you're going to have to experiment a bit to make sure that it allows you to do what you want it to do. But I'm sure that I will be making more of these and different versions of it. So be sure to subscribe to my channel. If you are a subscriber, you may want to unsubscribe and resubscribe and make sure you check the note to be notified. Sometimes it just suddenly bumps you off the notification list. And I do that the same, I take both sides. So I went through my gel prints and I picked some colors. Now I'm laying my tags on here. And as you can see, the four, size five tags fits a gel print off an eight by 10. So I can get the same gel print for the entire side here. If you were using a larger tag, you will have to do what I'm doing on the other side. I'm just cutting that off. I glued it down with, I'm going to be using some adhesive and basically my choice of adhesive here was something that I have in my stash that I'm not using that I just decided I'm going to use it up. You can use Eileen's sticky glue or whatever your favorite adhesive is, but you really want it to glue down well because you will be folding this up and you want it to make, sh make sure that it glues well. So this is, I think it's Zig glue or whatever. And if you let it dry, it becomes tacky and removable. And if you use it while it's blue, it's permanent. So I'm just lining this up and pressing it down. I'm using a key card to make sure I get good coverage on here. And this is why I didn't mind that the masking tape is in there. Now you can paint with it. I don't like the look of the masking tape. You could use wash, decorative washi tape there if you choose. Then I'm trimming off any of the excess with the one side done. And I'm checking that all my edges are 
completely glued down. And if not, I'm just putting a little bit of glue in there and I'm folding it, making sure that it closes correctly. Even with just adding that one sheet of paper, you want to take time to grab your hole punch and punch out the holes here before you do the other layer. So now we're going to worry or do the center part. Now, how you decorate this, again, is their variations are endless. I, the part that I just showed you that I'm doing right now, I want it to be the same color background. I'm going to treat that as one page of an art journal, so to speak. So I cut out the tags just by putting a tag on there, tracing it and cutting it out. You didn't need to watch me cut them out. And then I'm just gluing these down. And sometimes it's not exactly perfect and that's okay. We're going to solve all those problems. These gel prints were created with shelf liner and dish, line, dish um, sink liner. And again, I'm trimming off the excess. Closing it up, making sure where I have it is where I want to have it. Now on the other part, this is going to, one of these is going to act as the front of my journal, my mini tag book or journal, if you will, and one is going to be the back. But I'm going to treat it as, again, one art journal page. So I cut them out again, trace them, cut them out, and now I'm just going to glue them on as you've seen me do before. using the key card to press down. Actually, this adhesive worked rather well. I will put a link to it in the description box below in case you want to check it out. Now, I could have used a solid gel print for that side as well, and that would have removed this white part. So I'm going to grab a makeup sponge and black paint and I'm going to shade around the outside edges and get rid of that white. Now, if I was doing this again and when I do do it again, I would paint the edges of around every tag black beforehand. I think that you would get better coverage and then I would shade on the gel print. But if you wanted each of these panels to be a different color and you cut them out, this is what you would do. And I love that black. It's just really framing the gel prints. If you don't have gel prints, you can use scrapbook paper. But again, if you're using scrapbook paper, it may be thicker than re this regular copy paper that these gel prints are on. And you're going to have to have more space in between the tags. So there we have one side and the other side. Now I got a little paint on there, rubbing it off, but then I decide, you know what, I'm not going to worry about it because right now I know I'm going to be doing lots of other things. So I'm shading around this side. So there's one, I'm going to treat that. There's the front and the back. Now inside, I've decided that I'm going to kind of pick a theme, things with feathers floating. I'm going to do that. So I grabbed this four feather stencil by the in from the crafters workshop and I'm stenciling on. Now here I'm just masking off this other feather because I don't I want to just work, get a clean print of this feather and I don't want to have to beat work so carefully. I'm using a combination of Prussian blue here and purple. And I'm just layering this feather on. I'm not sure yet what sentiment I'm going to use or any anything, 
but I do know that I just want to start with this. So that's what I'm doing. I'm starting. Sometimes inspiration comes when you're in the midst of things. You don't have to have every single thing figured out before you start. So I'm using different combinations of the colors. So some of the feathers are going to look one color. Some are going to look darker, more blue, more purple. And I want that variation. I'm also going to layer them up. And where they layer, it's going to look darker too. Now this is after my hand surgery. If you're wondering why I have a latex glove, I have a splint and a bandage still on my finger. And while, you know, I am feeling well enough to create, I don't want to get that all painty. And inevitably when I create, I get all painty. So that's why the glove, but it makes it very awkward. So in here, I thought, you know, things with wings, I found this black and white butterfly printable you can use a stamp and I'm just going to cut off the antenna here and I'm going to glue half of it on one side and half of it on the other side so when you open it up you have the butterfly wings and they open I thought that was really cute and I'm really happy with how this turned out I'm gluing this down with my Liquitex basic fluid matte medium And then that antenna that I took off, I'm just going to glue on the other side. They don't exactly meet, but they're close enough and they give that impression that they all are one butterfly. I absolutely love this section of this. I grab my wooden letter stamps, spreading acrylic paint on my glass mat, and I'm going to stamp the word fly on one side and soar on the other in the white acrylic paint. And I'm wiping off the acrylic paint on a baby wipe when I'm done, just to keep the stamps clean. Now when you're stamping with acrylic paint as opposed to ink, if you make a mistake, you can grab a baby wipe and wipe it off. You have some time to come out and get rid of it, just like you're seeing me doing. And I, you'll see me do that again. I Tend to, tended to have a little bit of a problem there. A little too much paint, so. If you're not happy with your stamping of letters, just practice, take some time and practice. And, you know, over time I've kind of accepted the imperfection of it all. Okay, so maybe I'm still a little bit of a perfectionist but I'm not even a trying to make it straight any, anymore. I guess that's my point. Loving, loving, loving the look of that. So this is the next section. And I'm going to use, I think, dragonflies here. One is going to be the front of this mini tag book and one will be the back. Now, since it's the front and the back and it's not closed in, this is the place for my tag, given the space I've gotten, that I can use some dimensional stuff. So I'm gonna use some modeling paste in a minute. But first I'm gonna stencil. This is the ethereal stencil and it has this dictionary print on it. And I'm using a blending brush and I'll put a link to it in the description box below and my black archival ink. Archival ink because it is permanent. I don't want anything to reactivate. So I just want some script or text in the background. And I thought the definition of ethereal worked well because I'm using, you know, butterflies and dragon, dragonflies. So I'm grabbing TCW's platinum modeling paste. But before I put the modeling paste on, I do grab my Stabilo oil pencil and just mark out where the dragonflies are going because I don't want the texture underneath that if I can avoid it. 
I love this little motif. It looks like stars. It goes so well with butterflies and dragonflies. So I'm just applying this platinum modeling paste through the stencil. In kind of a swoop. So there's one dragonfly going there and the other one's going there. And then I use a baby wipe and get rid of the white Stabilo All Pencil. And there I'm showing how I'm doing that. Now I had a little bit of a white around the dragonfly and I didn't want that so I was cutting off a little bit more of it. But you do what looks good for you. Gluing this down with my, again, the Liquitex Fluid Matte Medium. Many of these stamps and printables I have in a stash on my desk at the ready. And this tutorial, while, you know, I want it to look nice in the end, it's more about how to make the tag book than the focal images. You could use whatever focal images, whatever theme you want to use. I grab my quote, my sentiment pack, and I'm flipping through trying to find the perfect quote for this. I'm going to put believe in the magic and there's beauty and simplicity, but they're too big. So I printed them smaller. And I will put a link to the video where I teach you how you can do that if you buy my sentiment packs. So that one says, unlock your dreams and believe in the magic. And I just cut them to size to fit in. So again, one's the front, one's the back, but then they read together as a single page too. And depending on how somebody displays it, I'm uncertain what I want to do in that middle section yet, so I am doing some shading using the floating acrylic technique with black acrylic paint around the butterfly. I just wanted to pop off that background, and you can see how that just makes a difference. There's without shading, and the other one had it. And I go back and forth. I apply a little bit, let it dry, come back and add more if I want it darker. And you can use a heat tool in between to dry it to make to speed up that process should you want to. There we go, back and forth, adding more as I see fit. And I will be shading around the sentiments here and around the dragonflies. And you can see the difference between the one dragonfly and the other, between what was shaded and what wasn't. Now, if you don't want to do the acrylic floating acrylic technique, you can use the Stabilo All Pencil, Charcoal Pencil, or other options for shading around your focal images but it's well worth doing shading in whatever fashion you choose to do it. And just adding a little bit of shading on the butterfly, on the dragonflies themselves. Grabbing my Secure Glaze Black and outlining the sentiments. And I outline each of the pages as well, just to finish it off. I love this little tag book. I think it would be great as an alternative to a greeting card.
So here is the middle section, and I realized that I didn't have very much magenta in here, and there's magenta in the front, so I wanted to bring more of that onto this page. So I grabbed that four feather stencil, and I'm adding the magenta on it, just layering up more of these wings. Or feathers, I should say, sorry. Now these, this tag, the size five tag, is a, pretty close to the size of an ATC, just for measurements. The bigger tags, you would absolutely be able to put bigger focal images on. And I think on, on those, I may do each section differently. Or I may do the two on the left, turn that into one journal page, and the one, two on the right, turn that into another journal page. But here I'm going to turn these four sections in. Now I'm a brand ambassador for the Crafters Workshop and I got a shipment of stencils in today, including this one, Birds. And so no, it hadn't been in my house, but for 15 minutes when I saw it, I go, this is perfect for this middle section. And I'm just stenciling with white paint. If this was an art journal page, I may do this with uh, some kind of dimensional modeling paste, white pearl. But because I don't, I'm limited on how much I can get in there so that it closes properly, I'm just sticking with things that are flat. I'm building texture visually, not physically. I flip the stencil to get the reverse of the bird. And then I'm picking and choosing parts of the stencil that I want. You can build your own composition. Just make sure that the stencil doesn't have wet paint on it. And if you're flipping it, that it you know either is dry or you clean it off. Loving the look of that. Went back to my sentiment packs, found the one that says to have faith is to have wings. And I believe that came from sentiment pack number two. The other ones came from sentiment pack number three. And you can see those if you go to the link in the description box, Ninny's Napkins. And you can scroll through all the pages and see what's included, what sentiments are there, and pick one that matches your art journaling style. Gluing that down with my fluid matte medium. And I do let this dry in between because of video editing and stopping the camera for drying time, you're not seeing that drying time. But you need to make sure all your adhesives, all your paints are dry before you do line work, before you do any of that. Use the secure glaze pen to outline the birds and the stenciling there. Splattering with some white. Then I come in and splatter with some silver to tie in with the platinum modeling paste on the front. Remember, this is all one piece. So you want the colors and some of the components to go across all the different sections. So here is the finished tag. I think I would love to if I was gifting this, I would tie a small ribbon onto here and close it up and it would be like that. This would be an alternate to a greeting card. So you could theme it however was appropriate, whatever messages you wanted to send to whomever. And then they would open it up and there are messages for your friend. I love these could also stand 
like this. So when it's standing, you can change the view. So here you have that view or that view, or you could invert it and have that view as well. So I love that idea. Or you can have it like this so that can be all red. They stand, as you can see. So I hope you give this a try. Please, if you do, come to my Facebook group, Art Journaling and Mixed Media Creations, and share your take of this mini tag book.